Chapter 1 Akash In a remote Indian town, hidden in the shadows of time, lived Akash. He worked in a local company and had a seemingly normal routine, but a mystery loomed over his everyday life. The arcana of destiny wove an inextricable web around Akash, leading him to endure the torments of his enigmatic boss, Mr. Desai, a figure that seemed to emanate an eerie aura. His words echoed in Akash's steps like whispers from beyond, sending shivers that resonated in his mind. At night, the torment escalated. Oppressive dreams were the stage for a supernatural spectacle, where a man in a black suit, his back cloaked, wandered like an invisible specter, an elusive presence that haunted Akash's troubled soul. The veil of darkness covered his eyes, and the man's face could never be discerned. Gradually, the realm of the inexplicable took over Akash's life, entangling him in a network of intricate enigmas. His isolation increased as he feared sharing his supernatural afflictions with any living soul. He found himself lost amidst a whirlwind of supernatural events that dragged him into an escalating abyss of despair and loneliness. Desperate, Akash sought solace in prophets and seers, but the answers found were as ambiguous as the events that haunted him. It was as if the forces from beyond were challenging the natural order of the universe, and Akash's destiny was inexorably intertwined with the sinister magic surrounding him. Solemnly assured, the Zephyrs are calling. During sleepless nights, the presence of the man in the black suit became more palpable, haunting him with enigmatic visions that awakened his darker side. The concealed face drew closer and closer, but before it could be revealed, it would vanish into the ether, leaving Akash restless in his relentless search for the truth behind that spectral figure. As days passed, the tangible world and the supernatural interwove into an enigmatic plot that oppressed Akash's spirit. The tense atmosphere at work and the supernatural nightmares dealt severe blows to his already shaken psyche, and he found himself trapped in a dilemma between sanity and madness. And then, on a dark twilight afternoon, when the two worlds seemed to collide, a car accident happened right before his eyes, as if a scene pulled from the depths of his own tormented mind. Akash witnessed destiny unfold, but his vision was obscured and he realized that his hands were futilely tied by the veil of the supernatural. The car accident was a harbinger of destiny, a sinister parable of the events to come. The loose ends of the supernatural plot remained unanswered, and Akash found himself entangled in a labyrinth of uncertainties and enigmas, unable to unravel the universe's designs. And so, Akash's story plunged into the twilight of the soul, an enigmatic and inexplicable tale where the supernatural and the real intertwined in eternal mystery, and the answers remained hidden in a realm beyond human reach. Akash's destiny was at the mercy of the supernatural forces that enveloped him, leading him into an abyss of restlessness and affliction, with no resolution to the enigmas obscuring his path. Chapter 2 Giovanni Giovanni was an Italian mountaineer who yearned to unravel the mysteries of the world's most imposing mountain, Everest. His restless soul, though filled with courage, had an inevitable calling towards the vastness of heights. Giovanni set off on a solitary journey, aiming to confront the majestic pinnacle of the legendary mountain. The climb to Everest during the frigid season was an unrelenting challenge, where every step was a hesitant advance amidst adversity. Solitude, like a persistent shadow, whispered in his ears and echoed in his heart, casting doubts on his choices and purposes. There was no human company to alleviate the weight of isolation, only the distressing silence of the heights. In the ruthless obscurity of the mountain, while the snow hissed on the slopes, Giovanni found himself entangled in a disquieting enigma. Amidst the fog and storm, a shadowy figure emerged from the depths of the mountain, dressed in black with enigmatic back turned towards him. The man in black, almost translucent, seemed like a surreal apparition, a dark spirit arising from the abyss of solitude. The mountaineer stood petrified before the enigmatic figure, whose presence seemed to eclipse the biting cold and white vastness of the mountain. It was as if Everest itself manifested a supernatural entity to test Giovanni's tenacity and sanity. With unequivocal veracity, the winds are summoning. 
Amidst the incessant snow, the man in black was an inescapable presence, challenging the limits of human perception. Giovanni felt entangled in a web of anguish and uncertainties, questioning the reality of his own visions. Isolation propelled him towards an abyss of despair, and he found himself devoid of any anchor to reality. With each step, the enigmatic figure seemed to lead him beyond the limits of human comprehension. Giovanni, captive of his own restlessness, struggled against the supernatural forces oppressing him. The climb, which should have been his triumphant glory, turned into a journey to the abyss of his own mind, and relentless descent into the depths of solitude. As the winds howled in the inaccessible heights, Giovanni felt increasingly chained to the visions of the man in black. His appearances became more vivid, an unwavering presence that insinuated into his core, corroding his sanity. Loose ends of the mystery entwined in a whirlpool of unrest, offering no answers or escape. Giovanni found himself entangled in a samba nightmare, where the line between real and imaginary blurred in a dark dance. The snow, like a mournful veil, concealed the true face of the mountain and the enigmas that surrounded it. He felt lost in the labyrinth of Everest, with no way out from the deadly trap of isolation and the supernatural. And so, the Italian mountaineer, whose soul once yearned for heights and the glory of the summit, was consumed by the abyss of solitude and madness. The man in black, a sinister shadow feeding on his vulnerability, enveloped him in a tragic and irreversible fate. Giovanni's story remains a dark and melancholic tale, a bleak portrait of the price paid for the relentless pursuit of mountain mysteries. The inaccessible slopes of Everest hide secrets that defy human understanding, and Giovanni's tormented spirit may wander forever, trapped in the depths of his own solitary soul. Chapter 3 Taylor. The American forensic pathologist, Dr. Taylor, possessed the ability to decipher the most heinous deaths with perspicacity, but there was an enigma that plunged her into the depths of terror, a sequence of cases of grotesque mutilations plaguing the region. Bodies devoid of limbs and marred by indescribable marks defied reason, enveloping the city in a funereal atmosphere. In the autopsy laboratory, Dr. Taylor meticulously examined the corpses. However, with each effort, the answers seemed to elude her like dancing shadows in a tangled skein. The city plunged into the heart of terror, while the pathologist saw her own sanity being corroded by the abyss of uncertainty. Amidst the viscera and desolation, Taylor came across a terrifying vision, the man in black, an enigmatic figure with hidden back, emerging from the shadows like a specter from beyond. His macabre presence insinuated itself amidst the investigated cases, disturbing the pathologist in a whirlwind of supernatural mysteries. In a sincere testimony, the auras are calling. The shadowy figure became an obsession for Taylor. During sleepless nights, her retinas opened to invisible eyes, lurking in the recesses of her tormented mind. Like a sinister omen, his apparitions overlapped with the mutilated bodies creating a dark link between the unsolvable cases and the beyond. On a stormy night, after a morbid and distressing examination, the figure of the man in black materialized before her, emanating an aura of fear and despair. Taylor, taken by an unknown force, followed him through the city's labyrinth, shrouded in a veil of darkness. The sinister figure led her to a desolate and abandoned setting, where an enigmatic building awaited to reveal its hidden secrets. The shadow of the man in black turned towards her, revealing a gaunt and pale face as if belonging to the depths of death. The heavy silence of the night was broken by a chilling voice that resonated in her soul. The truth lurks in the darkness, Doctor. Terrified and captive to a supernatural force, Taylor was thrown into a whirlpool of despair and hallucination. The line between the real and the supernatural dissolved, and she found herself trapped in a macabre web woven by the enigmatic presence of the man in black. The cases of mutilation multiplied, and the city sank into an abyss of horror and desolation. Taylor, in her insane quest for answers, discovered that the evil that afflicted her was inseparable from the very evil that haunted those mutilated bodies. And as darkness expanded and her sanity faded away, the man in black remained as the sinister harbinger of an unfathomable abyss, 
casting her into the depths of terror and madness. The autopsy laboratory became her metaphorical grave, and the city succumbed to the macabre dominion of hidden secrets, sealing its fate in the unfathomable abyss of the unknown. Chapter 4 Ivan In the desolation of the vast Russian expanse, stood a dark and relentless prison, like a sentinel from hell. In its heart lived a solitary jailer named Ivan whose hardened gaze bore witness to the unimaginable horrors that plagued that desolate place. His routine was surrounded by corrupted souls and tormented minds, and he knew that revolt was only a matter of time. The oppressive atmosphere in the prison foretold an imminent tragedy. Time slipped slowly through Ivan's hands, like sand falling to the bottom of an unyielding hourglass. The cold walls and rusty bars echoed the despair of those imprisoned, each with their stories of misfortune and regret. The jailer, a silent witness to human decay, felt imprisoned by his own dark fate. Amidst the monotony of everyday life, Ivan began to notice an enigmatic figure among the inmates, a man in black whose face remained hidden. He moved through the cells with an ethereal agility, and his steps were as silent as a ghost. While fear assaulted the jailer's heart, a morbid curiosity compelled him to observe the mysterious presence. In a solemn oath, the winds are appealing. The figure of the man in black was a sinister apparition dancing in the shadows of the corridors, invisible to the eyes of the prisoners. His ominous appearance was in tune with the evil that enveloped that cursed place. Ivan felt a shiver run down his spine every time the figure materialized before him as if death itself had chosen him as a witness to its nefarious presence. One night, as tension in the prison reached boiling point, the revolt finally erupted. Deafening screams echoed through the concrete walls, and the smell of violence hung in the air. The prisoners united in a bloody riot, breaking the barriers that confined them. As chaos ensued, Ivan found himself cornered among the furious inmates. He knew it was only a matter of time until the prisoner's fury turned against him. Amidst the agony, his tormented mind glimpsed the figure of the man in black once again. The man in black remained immune to the fury of the revolt, like an impassive shadow observing the chaos around him. The sinister presence whispered in his mind, like an ancient lament, and Ivan felt he was on the brink of madness. As violence unfolded before his eyes, Ivan felt a dark calling to follow the man in black. As if under the control of an uncontrollable force, he distanced himself from the revolt, withdrawing into the shadows. The mysterious figure led him to a hidden labyrinth in the darkest recesses of the prison, a place where torment took root like poisonous ivy. There, before Ivan, the hidden truth behind the enigmatic figure began to unfold. The man in black turned to him, and Ivan faced an empty face, devoid of life and soul. The horror of the encounter almost made him faint, but his mind was trapped in a dark snare, and he was compelled to continue. The man whispered in a voice that seemed to emerge from the depths of hell, revealing dark secrets and ominous prophesies. Your prison is the very shadow that haunts you, jailer. Violence and evil feed on the human heart, and the revolt you witness is merely an extension of what resides in your condemned souls. The words of the man in black resonated like the cry of a penitent specter, and Ivan realized he was not merely an observer of that horror, but a catalyst for the very calamity that plagued the prison. The tormenting truth consumed him, and Ivan found himself imprisoned not only by the iron bars of the prison, but also by the dark chains of his own tormented soul. The enigmatic figure left him, abandoning him to face the dark fate that awaited. The prison riot finally reached its peak, and tragedy materialized in a bloodbath. Ivan found himself lost amidst the carnage, surrounded by the tormented souls he had helped in prison. Revolt and terror swallowed them all, like an endless abyss. And as the prison plunged into the darkness of misfortune, Ivan realized that the man in black with hidden back was more than a phantasmal vision. He was the embodiment of the inherent evil in human nature, and the prison was the grotesque reflection of his own dark soul. Chapter 5 The Winds At the core of an obscure dimension, for figures dressed in black cloaks gathered in a shadowy chamber, where light seemed to succumb to eternal darkness. 
their features remained veiled by the shadows, giving them a mysterious aura as their voices echoed like indistinct murmurs in the dimness. The first individual, whose words resonated with eloquence and hopelessness, carried with him the shadows of ideas that man is condemned to eternal recurrence, to the incessant repetition of his misfortunes. The second being, whose tone of voice denoted introspection and agony, brought with him the shades of theories that the individual is bound to distressing choices, perpetually balancing between despair and faith. He emphasized the constant restlessness of existence, where the search for the absolute was a solitary and challenging journey. The third entity, whose voice carried lucidity and perspicacity, brought to light the shadows of knowledge of the power that shapes human reality, creating an illusion of freedom. He warned about the invisible prison of knowledge that trapped minds and bodies. Finally, the fourth figure, whose words denoted wisdom and depth, evoked the essences of metaphysical philosophy. He argued that the true search for freedom and meaning resided in the contemplation of eternal ideas, but few possessed the courage and capacity to transcend the darkness to reach the light of truth. In that shadowy chamber, their voices intertwined like a macabre dance of thoughts, echoing like whispers of hidden divinities. Pessimism permeated the environment like an oppressive mist hanging over the future of humanity. It is futile to seek meaning in existence, proclaimed the first individual. But he seeks significance, even if it is an illusion, pondered the second. He becomes a prisoner of his own ideas and the illusion of freedom, added the third. But few have the courage and capacity to ascend from darkness to light, argued the fourth. And so, in that dark room, the four men in black continued to discuss the future of humanity. Their enigmatic presence in that abyss of knowledge left an indelible legacy, like shadows projected at the core of human thought. And the winds came.